good. So now what we got is we got some uh, comments and questions, and I'm going to open the floor real quick. So Michael, uh, you typed a question in the chat, and I'm going to give you a chance to actually ask Edgar your question. So you've got the floor. Hello, Michael. Hey, Edgar. Uh, you know, I actually had you as a teacher here in Miami, and <clears throat> I want to know, like, when did you know that you finally made it in voiceover? Was there like a moment where you went like, aha, you know, I, I finally did it. You know, this is the big job I've been waiting for. Um, when did you finally know it's like, OK, yeah, this is my career and this is, you know, I finally made it in this career. Was there a single point or was it over time? It happened over time. And let me tell you something. When when I began in broadcasting, I was not even doing commercials. And, and basically my my line of work, even though I've been a broadcaster for a long time and I love broadcasting, um, I've also been a VO for advertising, which is basically guys where the money is. And uh, having said that, when I began getting, you know, or trying to get into the advertising business as a VO and be considered by big agencies and give, and those big agencies giving me, you know, the big projects, that took a while. When did I know that I was, that I had made it in the business? It took me around six to seven years when I was called for an audition for what I believe was a TV network, to do the imaging of a TV network. And uh, I did the audition, forgot about it. And probably four months later, I got the call. I didn't even remember that I had done that audition. So I got the call and I didn't know what network it was. And it turns out it was Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers was launching a network in Latin America called the Warner Channel, uh, which we have here in the States as well, but it's a completely different network. Uh, but the Warner Channel in Latin America was being was going to be broadcasted from Mexico to Argentina. We're talking about 23 different countries, 24 seven presence of the voice there. More than 45 million eyeballs tuned into that network. That is a big break. And when I got it, I said, Jesus Christ, what, how am I going to do this? Because one thing I can tell you guys, I was being thrown again into an area that I was not familiar with which is promotions. That is something completely different. And to me, one of the most difficult things to do in this business, one thing is doing commercials. Another thing is doing promo, promo work at least, because it is a completely different ball game. So now I'm thrown into this humongous network and I have no experience or prior experience to do promo work. So I had to, you know, jump into that discipline again and let me see what I can do to make this thing work. And it worked because I stayed there for around 19 years until I quit. They didn't quit me. They didn't fire me. I quit because I, I didn't get to the, to the point where I had a, um, I had a uh, attractive contract with them. Okay, so that was the reason for me to exit. And then I went and moved on to A&E, which is another big network as well. But yes, at that precise moment, when I got that exposure, when I got, you know, the when I when I fathomed the scope of what I was getting into, I said, this is the moment that I think was the definitive one and that made me a voiceover, at least a voiceover with international presence. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. Let's open the floor for Kevin in regards to social media. You've got the floor, Kevin. Hello, how you guys doing? Kelvin. Uh, Ashley's Kelvin, not Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Garcia, uh, yeah. real quick. I know you talked about having a manager or agent, but when you're first starting out and you're using social media, how important is it to have separate accounts for IG or LinkedIn or Facebook? Or can you incorporate your voiceover within your personal social media accounts? You know, I, I sell myself mostly on LinkedIn, not even in not even in Instagram, even though I do things on Instagram and I, and I keep IG as a working tool, not as a not as a selfie thing, you know, to, to post, you know, stupid things that I'm doing, you know, uh, on a daily basis. I don't think that IG is something for that. I think it's, it is a very important work tool, it, but I think I rely mostly on LinkedIn. Uh, to to do that part of my uh, social media thing. Instagram, I have to be honest with you, Kelvin, I am 
kind of lazy with Instagram. I'm not that. Uh, I'm not the guy that is constantly posting stuff or whatever. I'm. I'm not that kind of guy. Probably because I'm old school and uh, you know how it is. Yeah. But uh, I'm not that. You know, into that thing. Even though I know that I'm making a big mistake. But again, I. I'm moving myself in terms of branding my my uh, my services, as if I want to call them that something. I'm going to brand my services throughout the number of agents that I'm going to have. LinkedIn will help me to kind of solve the situation of people being able to uh, see something that I can do or, or see my demos. My website is also there for, for that purpose. And I only have my website. When somebody is interested in me, go to my website. You have everything you need over there so you can see and make up your mind if I'm the guy for you. Because normally this doesn't this doesn't mean that we have to be uh, professionals that are going to be working with clients on a one-to-one -one basis. That doesn't happen that much. You have to look for the big things. You have to look for the, uh, the advertising agencies. You have to go to the networks. You have to be, you know, in a, in a lot of different places and doing a lot of different things that are going to help you out in terms of being or becoming a more uh, complete professional. But in terms of the branding and the IG thing, uh, I, I have to be honest, uh, Kelvin. I, I'm not I'm not your go to guy in terms of, uh, of how good I am on social media or or uh, or how frequently I post on social media. I'm not I'm not precisely that kind of guy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelvin. Thank you so much. I want to shift back to something that you said, because uh, this is really important. You talked about representation. Yeah. Uh, so for those people who are looking to become a voice actor, do they need representation to make it in this business? Yes, they need uh, they need representation to make it in the business, because otherwise you don't have access to the to the auditions that you need to have. Uh, but there is a path to get to that point, because one thing that I will tell you guys, never, and I mean never, approach an agent without a, not a decent, a absolutely spectacular demo tape. Otherwise, they won't even consider you. And I'm gonna tell you guys why. Reps have a lot of people already represented, a lot of voiceovers, and a lot of them could be similar to what you do or similar in the voice that you have. So why would I need to? If you don't give me something unique that I don't have, then I won't even consider you. So you have to research who can represent you. You have to research their, their, you know, their, their data bank and see what they have as, as talents being represented. Do I fit in there? Yes, let me send a big, humongous, a spectacular demo tape for them to consider. And probably I'll get the representation with them. There is no other way. Although, I will tell you something. There is a faster way to do this, at least to get the experience. It doesn't come cheap, but it's a way. And by the way, I'm, I'm gonna be talking today and probably mentioning some brands. I'm not plugging in anything here, okay? It's not my interest, uh, but I need. I, I I feel compelled to do this because otherwise you guys are not going to know. And uh, one of the ways to do this and to start on this business, if you don't have the resources, if you don't have the experience yet, if you don't have the reps, because obvious, you're still you know a beginner. Go to Voices.com and create a profile on Voices.com. That will help you significantly. Of course, the auditions are gonna come if you pay Voices.com, which is nothing. Uh, well, Voices.com is something that goes or will set you back around 500 bucks a year. But it will pay back if you, if, if you know what you're doing. Voices.com will allow you to get auditions on a daily basis. All that auditioning will let you know exactly what's going wrong with you. Why am I not being selected? Because that's one thing that I will tell you and I tell my students every time. Guys, I do a hundred auditions. I get called for two, three tops. It's that complicated. It's not something that we're gonna be doing and every day we're gonna be auditioning and getting commercials. No, because there is a million people out there that have 
what I have or they are even better than me. So it's a tough competition out there. So Voices.com could be the market is actually the marketplace for voiceovers on a global scale. There are several websites devoted to this. I prefer this one because it's the one that I've worked for or worked on, I'm sorry, for a number of years now. And to me, has the best curation in terms of clients coming in because I've seen others that have, you know, very crappy, um, very crappy budgets. And I'm not interested in those kind of things. I think this one could help you guys significantly to start understanding the business. For example, do you guys know how to understand the directions given to you on an audition? Because it gets complicated. It is something that we need to, to, uh, to kind of digest, translate, and put to work in, in a voice. And this is so subjective that we sometimes don't even know if we're doing the right thing. So to me, and let, let me tell you this small, um, this small anecdote. I was doing an audition for a commercial for Postmates the other day, but they were requiring someone with a Mexican accent and I'm not Mexican. So I kind of did what I had to do and what I think is, you know, a typical Mexican accent. But I did the, the audition without any hope. So I, you know, I just did it and I sent it over and I got selected. Don't ask me why I got selected. So when I'm recording with the agency in LA, I'm here in Miami, we are connected through a technology we call Source Connect, which I can talk about later on. Uh, and the uh, producer is asking me, are you Mexican? And I, and I thought, Jesus Christ, this is a question that can, you know, topple the whole thing to the ground because uh, 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 these guys don't know. So I came through and I, and, and I was honest. I, I, I told them, no, I'm from Venezuela, actually. So there was this silence that went around for 15 to 20 seconds. And I was thinking, I knew what was going on. That lady was, Jesus Christ, we ended up hiring someone that's not even Mexican. And the client is Mexican. How are we going to pull this off? But we pulled it off. And we did it. And the commercial got aired. So it depends, guys, sometimes uh, in, in, in the way that we audition and the way we understand things, and we're able to do them. Subjective business, sometimes, and by being subjective, let me, let me just backtrack here a little bit, by being subjective, that's the reason why you're gonna get so many rejections every day. But those rejections must not, you know, overwhelm you, must not discourage you, because basically it means that you just weren't the guy for the job. That's the only thing that you have to consider every time you audition and you don't get selected. Okay.